Cistrans stereoisomerism comes up in the complex ions section of your transition elements topic in your A-level in chemistry. We know it's also mentioned in the alkenes topic when we do organic chemistry, but the rules here are a little bit different. So let's study the different types of ligand arrangement that causes for cis and for trans stereoisomerism in the complex ions, including when bidentate ligands are involved, because those scenarios are a little trickier to understand and interpret. On screen now, you can see that I've got two different stereoisomers, both for the formula CO, Cl2, and H3, 4 with a positive charge. Now, the cobalt here is cobalt 3 plus. The two CLs mean that I've got two chloride ion ligands, and I've also got four NH3 ammonia ligands in this complex ion as well. You can see I've labeled up the two structures as cis and trans already, but I want to get to the bottom of how the formula informs us that we can have cis-trans stereoisomers. Now, the main reason is described here at the bottom. We've got a 2 to 4 ratio between our six monodentate ligands. So I've got two of the Cl, the chloride ligand just here, and I've got four of the ammonia ligand, the NH3. So because of that 2 to 4 ratio between the six monodentate ligands, my octahedral structures here are going to have cis and trans stereoisomers. The positioning of the Cls here is going to be absolutely crucial. So the positioning of the two out of the two to four ratio between the six monodentate ligands is going to be the crucial part to allocating whether it is the cis or the trans stereoisomer. I've also replicated the structures just to the side of the image of the molymods so you can see how you would be expected to draw this in an examination. In this diagram on the left, you can see the one that I've labeled as cis. I've got the two CLs shown around the middle of that octahedral shape. Now, it's not important that they're around the middle. What's important is that they are 90 degrees apart. So I could have shown them one at the top and one at the side just here, like so. They would still be 90 degrees apart. That's this molecule, but just spun around a little bit. The important thing is the two CLs are 90 degrees apart, and so that means that this structure is an example of the cis stereoisomer. I could have also bonded them 180 degrees apart from each other, and that would cause for the trans stereoisomer. There's a massive instinct here to draw them directly across from each other, top and bottom, because it's the easiest way to do it, really, when you're chucking down the octahedral structure. But don't be surprised in the exam if they're aware of this and they try to hide a trans stereoisomer by showing them around the middle, but across here like that instead it would still be exactly the same thing. It would still be trans because the two out of the two to four ratio are 180 degrees apart from each other. So what about examples with bidentate ligands? Right, these are a little trickier to visualize. To help me out with this example, I am using a bidentate ligand of 1,2-diaminoethane just here. So that's a two carbon chain with an NH2 group on carbon one and then carbon two. If you need a recap of how to name amines, then you can click the little link at the top of the screen now and it'll take you to my recent video on that. So now looking at this bidentate ligand structure, that's what's being represented down here in the molymod kit. I del deliberately left the hydrogens off the molymod kit because it can really clutter this up and make it difficult to see what's going on. And then just next to this, I've used skeletal formula to represent the bidentate ligand, showing how it forms two coordinate bonds per ligand by donating two lone pairs to the transition element ion. For formal definitions of ligand and bidentate ligand and complex ion, please check the video description. I'll make sure that they're kept as up to date as possible. Now, concentrating on the use of the bidentate ligand then, look at the ratio between the monodentate and this bidentate ligand. The ratio here is two to two. Now, we still have an octahedral shape though, because the bidentate ligand is gonna form two coordinate bonds per ligand. So even though I've only got two of the bidentate ligand, I am still gonna get four coordinate bonds from that, or four dative covalent bonds if you prefer that term. And we can see that here in this structure, 
I've got my bidentate ligand on this side, and we can see how it's got two coordinate bonds going in. And we can see those labelled up here as well. And the same on the other side of the structure here. Where are the CLs? Well, once again here, just like before, the CLs are 180 degrees apart. And even if I was to spin this molecule round, so if you were to spin the screen round that you're currently watching this at the moment on, you would still see that they are 180 degrees apart from each other. So this can be drawn different ways as long as that angle is maintained between the two monodentate ligands here of the same type. That's the way we allocate this as being the trans stereoisomer on the left-hand side here. So what about the cis one? Well, the cis one actually carries something very special to it as well that I'll mention right at the end of this. First off though, why is this this cis stereoisomer? Well, it's the same structure. I've got this two to two ratio between the two monodentate and the two bidentate ligands here. But notice the two monodentate ligands of the same type are once again, as we saw before, 90 degrees apart, which makes this the cis stereoisomer. Similarly, I can spin this round, so feel free to spin the screen and you'll see that they maintain that 90 degree angle apart. So I could have done, same as before, I could have done one at the side here and then one at the top, they would still be 90 degrees apart. What's the special feature of this cis one then? Right, well, the trans stereoisomer doesn't have this, but the cis stereoisomer actually has an optical isomer as well. You can do a non-superimposable mirror image of the cis stereoisomer when you have this two to two ratio between the two monodentate ligands of the same type and the two bidentate ligands of the same type. And that's a really crucial way to differentiate between your diagrams here. And it does come up in the exam as a third suggestion for a type of isomer of these structures. So please watch out for that. It doesn't apply to the trans stereoisomer, but it does apply to the cis stereoisomer under this circumstance. Hopefully that clears up how you can draw these in the exam and how you allocate the different types of stereoisomerism. If you did find the video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like before you go and consider subscribing to stay updated. Until next time though, happy revising.